Hello, this is Mary Costello from Florida. Uh, today we're going to be discussing uh, several issues that uh, may arise when you are using your dental dam. Uh, let's take a look at uh, some of these um, issues. We're talking about dealing with interproximal restorations. I'd like to show you a kit that I found to be very useful. It's called the Compositite 3D Fusion by Garrison. And let me show you what's in this kit. Well, to begin with, uh, we're going to talk about how to preserve the interproximal dental dam when you're making your preparation. And so, uh, for that purpose, uh, we have what we call fender wedges. We'll, and we'll go over those in just a few moments. I'm just going to give you an overview of the kit. Uh, you've got your polishing uh, cups. And then, of course, we have our, our wedges. The uh, wedges are designed uh, with a material uh, that's rubberized and they have little filaments, uh, as, as we talk about it in a little bit, in more depth, uh, that help keep the uh, wedge into place. You have uh, different sizes depending on uh, how wide you need your um, wedge to be and, and the contact issues. And then uh, we have our contoured matrix systems here. Uh, you'll notice that uh, they're according to size. Uh, as a little guideline, it, it shows you that you have uh, the smaller one for premolar. Then you have a premolar with a subgingival uh, section. And then you have a molar. And then you have uh, the tall molar as well. Um, basically it depends on what size your tooth is that you're restoring. Um, you may find that you may need to use a larger uh, uh, matrix system depending on the on the height of the tooth and the size of the tooth. So it's really more of an issue of the sizing of the tooth but this just gives you some general guidelines. And then you have the uh, the rings. Uh, these uh, 3D rings are uh, available in, uh, you have a, a, a standard size and then you have a little taller size and this particular one is utilized uh, when you have a broader uh, uh, restoration to place. So let's take a little look on how to use these items. I have here basically a, a restoration that was prepared on the last tooth in the arch. Now, one thing that um, you would need to do is use a flat jawed clamp. Uh, the whole idea is to try to keep the clamp in place and restore the tooth at the same time. Usually the flat jaws will not interfere with the seating of your matrix system. But first let's talk about preparing the tooth. So uh, what you want to do is place a fender wedge so that you're protecting the adjacent tooth. And at the same time, it protects the dental dam from tearing. So you wanna make sure that your wedge is secure in place. All right, and then you can go ahead and uh, prepare your tooth. Uh, more importantly, not making any issues with damage to the adjacent tooth. So once your tooth is prepared, you can remove your fender wedge. Now, another option you can do is you can lift the interceptal dental dam with a composite instrument, see like this, and reposition the dental dam while you're doing your preparation. Oh, to prevent to uh, prevent tearing the, the, the interceptal yeah, dental dam. Sure. Then when you prepped it, you can reposition the material back into place like that. So that's another option. But I, I think th I like the fender wedges because they, they do add, give you the added benefit of protecting the adjacent tooth. So, so that's one thing I like about those. All right, now, so here we are. We're ready to restore that last tooth there. And um, what we're going to use is um, because it is an MOD, we're going to need to use uh, some sort of a matrix system that will uh, cover the uh, distal and the mesial portion of the tooth. So we're going to use what we call a real matrix. Now the real matrix is, let me just show you here, these are really 
convenient to use, particularly when you're working on the last tooth of the arch. And so let me kind of go over some of the benefits of using uh, these systems. Uh, this particular uh, matrix system here, um, it's called the margin elevation. And uh, what that is for is that if uh, you say you have a tooth that's uh, that you're preparing for a crown and it's subgingival, the margins are subgingival. Um, so if you're doing a CEREC, uh, you need to build up your margins so it's super gingival to get your um, image. And so that's what these are for. They also have a coating on the inside which helps uh, their removal uh, as Sometimes it could be a little tricky trying to remove those when you're placing these subgingively. And so the other uh, style uh, is uh, similar to the old-fashioned Toffelmeyer matrix system. Remember they came in a thin and they came in a thick version. Uh, this is called uh, the uh, dead soft band and um, it's, it's uh, much softer. It's equivalent to what would be the thin matrixy systems of, of the past. Uh, and uh, those uh, would be used for that purpose and they come uh, in um, a bicuspid version and they also come in a version for your molars. Notice that they're, they're contoured uh, which makes it much easier to uh, uh, maintain the integrity of, of the structure of the tooth. You also have the uh, system that comes in a, a plastic matrix system and if uh, you're using your uh, composite material, some people like to use the, the plastic uh, matrices systems for curing, but you can use the metal as well for composites. And then finally you have the um, regular matrices system. Uh, now this system on this band is a little bit thicker. It would be equivalent to your thick universal band. And uh, it, uh, when you have a situation where you've got some particularly tight areas to negotiate to get the band into place, um, this uh, will make it a little bit easier to place because it is a little thicker band. When I first started to use this system, I wasn't sure how to use the applicator. I'm really embarrassed about that, but anyway, what I found out is you have to press forward to open up the little prongs so that in, it engages into the real matrix system. So essentially what you're doing is you're taking your, your matrix and with this in an open position, and then clicking into place. Engage your matrix system on the tooth. Okay, make sure you're seating it. And you just simply tighten the matrix system. Make sure your band is getting down where it should be seated. And you just tighten by turning clockwise and then disengaging this way. Now, you notice that what's, what's the benefit of this real matrix is that I was able to keep the clamp in place along with the matrix system. But if for some reason you had to remove your clamp in order to do the restoration, you can still remove the clamp and the little matrix uh, hub will keep the dam intact. It, it'll keep it so that it doesn't slip off the uh, tooth. And so that's the benefit of using the real matrix system. Now, let's talk a little bit about your wedging. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our wedge. And we're, uh, um, the wedges come in different sizes, as you can see. Here we go. Obviously, yellow is small. And then you have... Uh, progressively increasing in size uh, the wedges. So you want to determine uh, what size you need. And I'm going to try to go with this orange. I have a feeling that the orange is going to work with this particular case here. And we're going to insert this from the lingual. Okay. All right, so as you can see, these work very well 
uh, with the dental dam, you don't have the pushback. The little rubber filaments help keep it in intact, and it provides uh, the uh, re the separation that you need. It's imperative that you, in order to have a successful restoration, you need to provide the separation. And we're going to place our ring like that. All right. So as you can see, um, the ring is uh, providing you the separation. It fits over the existing wedge that we have in there, and it's maintaining the integrity of the of the matrix system, so that we could get a nice contour uh, and get a good result with our restoration. So as I mentioned, when dealing with interproximal restorations, and particularly the last tooth in the arch, using the flat-jawed clamp allows you to seat your matrices system. Now you see how this number four clamp has more of a curve? What happens with this is that the curvature in the clamp prevents the system from seating. And uh, if you did use a curved clamp, what you'd have to do is you'd, you would pretty much have to remove the clamp and then put your matrixy system in place. But if, the, like I said, the idea is, is to try to leave the clamp in place and seat the matrixy at the same time. And, and the flat jaw clamp will be more of a, of a benefit for that particular purpose. Yeah, I can see how that would make a, a significant difference. And, and, you know, even though our discussion today is on uh, rubber dams, this is a common question we get at Garrison with our sectional system is, you know, I'm having trouble keeping that ring seated next to the rubber dam clamp. And, well, if they use the correct rubber dam clamp, that probably would solve their issues. So. Yes. And, and the other thing, too, is uh, sometimes uh, some of the wing clamps have a projection. Well, look at this, for example. You see this little projection here and here? Uh, now, on this particular 7 clamp, the projection is much shorter. And so, um, what happens is sometimes this forward projection can run interference with placing your uh, ring system and, and your wedge. Uh, so, you may also want to look at using a flat jaw that has uh, either being a wingless clamp because it won't have that uh, particular extension or one that has a very short extension and that won't run interference with your seating uh, your systems.